Hi everyone, <clears throat> today I will be reviewing the Hubson Spyhawk uh, sent to me by Banggood. In the description of the video you will find links to my uh, blog with a detailed review of the plane as well as to uh, Banggood where you can purchase it. <clears throat> now first impressions the box is bigger than I thought but then again this is a complete plug-and-play actually ready to fly solution it comes with everything that you need to uh, go out and fly immediately the box came very well packed although there are a few dings at around the edges but I don't think anything inside has been broken uh, this is the first time I will be opening the box so you will see what's inside as I am seeing. Uh, let's open it then. Alright, so this looks pretty much intact. I can't see any scuffing or bruising or warping so everything looks looks very good so let's start somewhere um, alright let's start with this end there's a nice little pack here I'm guessing that's a user manual um, alright we'll come back to that uh, there is there's an instruction about antenna signals and how they should be oriented and a set of stickers and an instruction where to place them on the plane now I will be building this right now just so you see how easy it is to build or if it's easy let's put this back in we'll come back to it all right. Oh, under that pack we have a charger uh, adapter with a new plug. I'm guessing you will get the appropriate plug if you're in another country. And this should be, yeah, it's a 5.8 gigahertz uh, patch antenna, and I'm guessing this is linearly polarized because. From the description, I think the plane has a linear polarized as well. Uh, Alright, let's go. Oh, look at this. There's an antenna in here. Um, let me try and get it out. Okay. Now, this should be the 2.4 GHz antenna. Uh, right. And here is the remote. Actually looking better than I thought. You have four switches, two potentiometers, the control sticks, which are a bit soft. Uh, but I'm pretty sure if if the radio is open you can adjust that trim buttons and menu buttons etc <clears throat> the power button I see a speaker here and an indicator LED and on the bottom we have a SD card slot a USB video and audio uh, jacks I'm guessing maybe you can get audio out out of this so you can plug it into uh, glasses or something but I will test that at a later date and on the back here there's a charging cap but there's nothing underneath I'm guessing there must be a version of this that you can charge with the supplied adapter and the battery cover is actually held down by a screw and there's a battery box for eight AA batteries 
So these are not provided with the plane apparently. So you might want to get these along with the plane or would be nice if you have them. Uh, we'll put some batteries in just a little later. Next up is, oh it's the screen cover, uh, actually the, the screen shade opens up like that and folds down nice and easy. Let me just put this on here. There are two slots on the top and the bottom. I'm gonna slide the, foot, the bottom one in and then I'm gonna clip the top one in and now it opens up without any issues. I'm not going to remove the safety um, foil over the screen uh, just so you so I can preserve the screen in good condition. Next there's a battery charger. Uh, okay I'm guessing that adapter plugs in here that plugs into the wall and the battery plugs in here. Now this is interesting. There is labeling for a 2S and a 3S battery. And yet the 3S port is closed. Not sure why they didn't leave it open. So it can be used for 3S batteries as well. And here is the flight pack. It's a 1300 milliamp. 2 cell 15C battery. It's a pretty compact one actually. So I'm hoping it will give the promised flight time between 20 and 30 minutes. We'll see about that when we get to the flying field. Uh, in here we have the canopy cover which by the looks of it clips on the body no magnets which might be a better idea I mean this clipping thing might be a better idea than the magnets and now we get to the plane itself it's secured with two of these you, you can remove them and first is the wing all right, this looks pretty interesting. You can see the LED strips installed. One is green, one is red. Aileron servos installed and connected. And in here, we have a lot of cables. This is aileron, this is throttle. I'm guessing this is the ESC cable and I'm guessing these are for the LEDs. The ESC is in here and motor wires go back to the motor at the back with a prop uh, four, four not sure if that's four inches but it says four four on top so possibly not sure it looks like a five inch prop but it might be four I'm not sure and you can actually see the motor is angled to the left this is a regular tractor prop and you can see the motor is angled to the left to compensate for the thrust and it is also slightly angled up pusher planes of this configuration need to have that in order to uh, fly well the plastic here seems to be a little bit flexible and I'm guessing it won't be easy to break it but then if you crash hard enough you will and here's a clip for uh, the canopy this just clips in here like that and then unclips alright putting this aside as well and now we come to the fuselage Okay, so here we have the fuselage. Oh, 
with a little let me check this yeah that's that's the 2.4 control antenna and the wire from it goes directly into the Hubson flight controller so this is an autopilot with an integrated receiver uh, you can see the all right you can see the cam and uh, video transmitter connections there as well as the servo ones and on this side are the servo connections and the throttle one wires seem to be long enough the two tail servos right here with long push rods to the back pre-installed and uh, Oh, there's something here in the tail. Oh, actually, yeah. Oh, well, this is fun. Look at that. The tail clips on. Snap. Snap. Just like the canopy, which clips. And under here, look at that. This is where the GPS is. Away from all sorts of interference. Now this, this is pretty nice. It, it should work well. Alright, let's clip this back in. Alright, um, here are some more clips for the wings. And these plastic holes, which... Yeah, the, these plastic things, pins on the wings, they probably go in there and snap in. And here at the front, you can see the 5.8 GHz antenna, which is almost showing out of the bottom. And right here at the front, I'm guessing, are the camera. Let me see, yeah. On one side is the camera board, on the other side is the video transmitter board. Uh, it comes, well, would you look at that? It comes with an SD card in. Uh, I have to look at the specs, but I think it was supposed to be 4 gigabytes. A micro USB port and a recording button. Uh, another clip for the front part of the canopy and a camera at the front with a camera cover. There we go. Look at that, a nice big lens. Uh, right, should be able to see that now. A nice big lens. Uh, we'll get to that. Okay, so this looks pretty straightforward. Um, should be very easy to wire everything up. So let's let's do that now. Now here's one, one thing that might turn into an issue at some point, but also might not. This is on the bottom, so every time you land, this antenna will go like this. I really hope this um, plastic tube that's on, all on top of it will protect it, so it doesn't get torn off. The 5.8 antenna is situated safe within the fuselage, so I don't think that can suffer any damage. The nice thing is The labels where everything goes are on on the cables and on the autopilot or flight controller as it is. It's not a complete autopilot, I'm guessing it doesn't do missions. But at least everything is labeled so it's easy to do. 
Okay, everything plugged in. <clears throat> and now it's time to snap on the wing. Let me just um, move the wires away and align with the holes at the bottom. Okay. Oh, okay. This snapped at the front, turning to the bottom. The front one is the front one is in, and I just need to push a little on the back one. All right, that's in as well, and that was surprisingly easy to be honest. And to tell you the truth, there is absolutely no play here. Only the wing flexes a little bit, but it's a pretty light plane and you can see there's a carbon tube in there so that should be strong enough yeah all right we just have to put in the battery there's a slot for it right here it should be yeah it seems like it's a tight fit but that's nice all right, so that just all that is left is to plug this in. Before that, I need to uh, screw on the antennas. Never, never power on a transmitter of any sort without putting the antenna on. Never. And we're gonna put both antennas. This is the 4 point, uh, 2.4 and 5.8. I'm going to put all switches to their upward positions as that is generally uh, the zero position. Screwing on the 2.4, it bends so uh, you don't have to hold the radio like this all the time. You can just bend this up. And let me screw in the 5.8 antenna. Alright, actually it would be a good idea if I knew which way this should be directed. Uh, okay, one more thing. Uh, we need to put some batteries in. All right, radio's ready. Uh, opening the screen. Now let's put that away. All right, let me see just what the pre-flight procedure is. Now, first we have to power on the transmitter and only then the plane. Okay, powering on the transmitter then. Actually, I'm gonna turn it that way. Not sure if you can uh, see anything from that angle. All right, I'm gonna just leave it. Like that, powering on, it's on, and you can see the battery measurement, top right corner, that's of the radio, so you can use a 3S LiPo to power it, I'm guessing it wouldn't be a problem, and you can actually see a, a timer on the screen running, and also the trim sliders uh, on the bottom and bottom left and right. And let's power on the plane. Okay. Alright. Some noise coming out of these servos. But... Yeah, some more information showed up on the screen. Okay. If you can see this, let me just see, right, there's a new uh, battery measurement 
top right, right under the 12 volts, so that's the flight pack voltage. And uh, right in bottom middle, uh, there are a lot of zeros, that is where the GPS coordinates should be. And uh, right above that, it says stabilized. So right now, whenever you move the plane, it will try to uh, level itself out. Look at that. I'm turning and the control surfaces are staying, are trying to correct it. In the air, that will always be hunting for that level position. I think the elevator needs a bit of a, a little bit of adjusting, uh, but other than that, everything looks good. Now, let me see. Okay, this side is quieter. On here, you can also see top left corner. It's the number of satellites locked. Uh, the one after that, I'm not completely sure, probably some signal strength indicator. And below that, you have row and pitch angles, so you can see what's the position of the plane in the air. And then you have altitude and distance from the takeoff position. Uh, all very important information. Now, let me try something here. I'll unplug the plane. Alright. And as you can see, all of that information is still on the screen. This means that the flight controller has some sort of telemetry, oops, which is sending, all right, some sort of telemetry, telemetry which is sending the information down to the plane about the about its stat status. Whoa! All right. Okay. So these are not are not trim slider. These are actually stick indicators. If you can see the two on the bottom left, they should be moving as I'm doing this. All right. So elevator is up. Down, right, left, right, left. All commands appear to be correct. And throttle. It's running in the correct direction. Alright guys, sorry about before. Apparently my camera stop recording after half an hour so uh, I only thought I did the rest of the review um, it's now a few days later and I've already flown the plane you can see it's uh, in prime condition so yeah no crashes uh, so um, let's finish the review so motor works well when running in the air, I can see just the tiniest bit of vibrations noticeable here and there, but nothing major. So, as far as I'm concerned, for what it is, this plane is usable as it is from the box, or at least the one that I got. Uh, the one thing that I, need, that I did have to correct was this clevis. I unclipped it from the control core and screwed it in a little bit because the in stabilized mode the elevator was pointed up when the plane was level um, so it needed a it needed a little adjusting actually not in stabilized in manual mode all trim centered this the elevator was pointing up which is not a good thing so I had to uh, adjust it but apart from that, no other intervention was required. Overall, this thing is an amazing 
piece of kit and it's ready to fly which is even better the H on the screen that I showed you was the heading that's coming from the compass on board and like I said it does have telemetry and the radio works surprisingly well really happy with this product alright stickers you will notice that I've placed stickers only on one wing and that is because they were really tricky to put on and actually to get them to uh, stick onto the wing I actually used a hairdryer to heat up the glue and activate it at least this is how it works on my stickers when I apply them I'm guessing the problem may be coming from the fact that uh, the molds for these EPO parts are sprayed with a special coating that helps uh, take out the part from the mold much easier and that's probably creating a slippery layer that's preventing the stickers from sticking to the plane. Right now I am going to do the other wing if I can find the stickers all right I will do the other wing but before that uh, let me just find it that one okay some cutting required right So you have to cut these, um, the stickers are actually with the application foil, you, so you basically remove the sticker from the paper with the foil, once the sticker is glued to the plane you remove the transparent foil and only the sticker remains which is much better. Nail polish remover would be a good choice uh, I just wipe the wing where the sticker will be just wipe the wing uh, to uh, in an attempt to remove that uh, spray coat that prevents it from sticking to the mold it, it definitely should come off if there is any before you can apply the stickers without much issues I was able to apply them here but it was a tedious task and uh, as you can see uh, I only did one wing didn't want to waste more time on uh, more of them now we're gonna wait for this to dry out well And once it does, okay, it's a lot, it has more friction than the other wing that hasn't been uh, cleaned. Definitely more friction. So I think, and nail polish isn't going to uh, damage this foam. Apparently. So now that it's dry, we can uh, we can begin just to complete the process a hair dryer alright now we're done don't, don't get the dryer too 
too close to the foam and don't use too high of a setting you don't want to damage the foam you just want to heat up the the foil so it will stick better you press on it after it's heated and you will see how it will um, sort of show the bubbles through that would mean it's uh, it's glued down really well and you shouldn't have any issues with it from here on alright one last thing the canopy just locks actually clicks in place one lock is here the other one is here just in front of the camera so you just click here click here and you're done and this is the completed plane and now we move on to the action to the actual flying bit see you in a second